Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm Kyle and this is Kaizen DIY Gym. In this video, I'll be making a power rack. First of all, I gotta say thank you for watching this video. I hope you watch the whole thing. Second thing I need to say, don't build a power rack. It was crazy and expensive and most people would be better off just purchasing a steel power rack. You can get a decent two by two on Amazon for around $300. And I've even seen some decent three by three options for less than $800. Those racks have the added benefit of being able to be sold on the secondary market when you're ready to upgrade. That being said, there are a handful of cases where building a rack makes sense. If you have access to free lumber, building probably going to be cheaper than buying. Maybe you want specific features that aren't available on a purchasable rack. Perhaps you live in an area of the world where purchasing is just not an option, which that's what I experienced for the first time when I went to Costa Rica. Or maybe you want something that can be outdoors and withstand rain, sun, and snow. That's the plan for mine anyway. I've always loved the idea of being able to work out in the elements. Okay, for the full list of tools and materials, check the description of this video. Purchasing from those links helps to support the channel. Safety first. Safety is always important, but with this project, it's even more extra important. Don't even try it unless you know what you're doing. If you get hurt, don't say I didn't warn you. DIY projects are awesome, but being safe is even more awesome. For this project, I'm using Rough Sawn Cedar. It's expensive at $40 for a six foot four x four, but I love how it looks, and cedar is naturally resistant to rot. A lower cost option would be pressure treated southern yellow pine. After a stop at my local lumber yard, I'm ready to get going. By the way, the bill for my lumber was a whopping $400. If I had used the pressure treated pine, the total would have been closer to $120. Once I get home, I start chopping this stuff up. 95% of this project is measuring, cutting, and drilling. I'm using a Titan multi-grip pull-up bar at the top, so that's going to dictate the width of my power rack. I use that as a reference for my cross member. Similar to my last few projects, I'll be using lap joints for this one, specifically half lap, because they will help with the stability of the rack. It takes a while to cut everything, but to me, it's worth it. Also, I just love doing this. Once I have everything cut, I lay it all out to test how well the pieces fit together. The left side looks good. Time to lay out the right side. Yep, everything matches up perfectly. I'll be reinforcing the lap joints with some T brackets and L brackets. I need to drill an additional hole into each one. I do this with my drill press and a step bit. After doing that on all of them, I spray paint them black and let them dry. I only spray paint the front sides because the back sides will be against the cedar. Instead of using any sort of adjustable J-cups, I'll be using scrap pieces of 4x4 as my J-cups set to my preferred heights. I cut them to 9 inches and then mark the holes before drilling them out with my drill press. These 4x4s are thick, so you need a long bit to get all the way through. I'm using a 9 16 auger bit that's 8 inches long. I'll be bolting everything together, but before I do that, I need to pre-drill the holes for the bolts. I lay out the brackets and use a small drill bit to mark the holes, then go through with the auger bit. I clamp the joints together to make sure the holes line up on each piece. At this point, I'm out of daylight. Usually I'd be working in my garage, but it's currently full of appliances and trash from my kitchen remodel, so I've got to call it quits for the day. I resume work on the next day, though it's a little rainy, I'm able to make some decent progress. I finish drilling out the holes for the T brackets and L brackets. The one thing I didn't realize until I got to this step is that I need another cross member for stability, but I don't have a piece long enough to span the width of the rack and I don't want to spend another $30 on lumber, so I'm going to make do with what I have. The plan is to use this 49 inch long piece and cut out notches from the rear uprights for it to fit into. Okay, now it's time to start getting my J-cups ready. After measuring the heights on my basement power rack, I mark where the J-cups are going on my new rack. I'll be drilling out the actual holes with my drill press, so I'm basically using the 4x4s and my cordless drill to mark the holes. To make sure these are even, I clamp the uprights together and then mark both of them. I'll be putting two sets of J-cups on the back uprights. Top is for straight bar squats, bottom is for flat bench, and two sets of J-cups on the front uprights. The top ones are for squats with the Mars bar, and the bottom ones are for elevating the barbell to load weights for deadlifts. I prefer doing it this way over using a deadlift jack. 
After those holes are marked, I have a few more holes to mark before I start drilling out everything with the drill press. I clamp the four uprights together and mark the holes for the safeties. For these holes, I'm using a 1 and 3 8 inch spade bit. It helps to have a little extra room for the 1 inch pipe I'll be using for the safeties. I'm only making three height options for the safeties. Drilling these holes out is a lot of work and I don't really need more than three. It's super important that these holes are straight so they all line up. So I'm using my drill press. You can use a corded or cordless drill, but it'll be tough to be accurate. It's time to drill the holes for my J-cups. This is relatively quick because I've already marked everything. Last but not least, I use my Forstner bit on the J-cups to make room for the bolts and washers. This allows them to be slightly recessed. Once those are done, I attach the J-cups. Now finally, it's time to assemble. Before I do that, here are all my parts laid out with measurements. I'm using half-inch hardware to assemble. This, plus the brackets, will ensure that the joints are reinforced well. The process goes pretty quick. I didn't pre-drill holes for the pull-up bar because I wasn't exactly sure where it was going to go. Now I'm ready for it. I line it up with the bolt from the corner bracket and drill the second hole. This part in particular should be done using the buddy system. It is difficult and sketchy doing this by yourself. I ended up resting one side on the tree while I got the other side upright. Not exactly safe, but I managed to put them together without getting injured. Next, I add the bottom cross member. Everything lines up nicely. The top cross member is a snug fit, so I use a mallet to knock it in, but once it's in, it is solid. By the way, I'm using lag bolts to attach these T-brackets to the upper cross member. I hop on and test it out. There's still some side to side movement. I'll address that in a minute. For now, I'm gonna cut my safeties. I'm using a 10 foot steel pipe and cutting it down to 50 inches. I'm happy to see the holes line up perfectly and I add a cap to the end. Now I'm gonna cut a couple additional supports for the cross member. I take a 48 inch piece of scrap and cut it in half with 45 degree angles on both ends. I use a pocket hole bit to make holes for my screws. I use a couple clamps to hold them up while I screw them in. In order to make sure this thing doesn't tip over and come crashing down while I'm using it, I drive in six 18 inch steel rebar pins into the ground and attach them to the rack. I test it out again and it feels much better. I have a few finishing touches to add before I call it a day. A couple more L brackets and 4x4 supports. And I add some plate storage. And then some barbell storage. And a landmine. This thing is good to go for now. I can do all of the main lifts and some accessory landmine work all from the comfort of my own backyard. This is awesome. So that's it for now. I have a feeling I'll be adding on to this thing quite a bit over the next six months. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do it. You know you want to. Okay, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.